good times and great oldies at Magic 105 FM. This is Johnny Shannon wishing you good luck. Keep listening for the sound of that longhorn steer to qualify and win just like magic. short shifts it seems at Kono 1011. Those shifts now just seem like they were way too short in the times we got to spend together at uh, various get-togethers for our broadcasting brothers and sisters here in San Antonio, Texas. And we're going to learn a lot about the life of one Johnny Shannon today. And I hope everyone here gets a chance to introduce, because it's a nice intimate group, gets to introduce yourselves to one another and gets to know uh, how Johnny's life touched you between the years of 1945 and 2015. There's a little dash in between those years, 1945 and 2015. And uh, a friend of mine, Linda Ellis, wrote, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. We got to spend part of our dash with Johnny Shannon. And we're going to hear about him today. And we're going to hear from his family and his friends and maybe even somebody who went to school with him back in the early days. The tools of his trade were his voice, his personality. And you kids over there even know of one of these days? <laughs> There's music on this. And Johnny's job was to put this on a turntable with a needle and make it go through the air, into your car, into your homes, into your hearts. And that's what Johnny did every time he was on the radio. He worked his way right into your heart with a seven second intro of a song. We all got to witness that and experience that. So let's celebrate Johnny's life. Please welcome his son, John Wayne. Thank everybody who made it today. And, uh, you know, I've been telling everybody since the, the day we found out about my dad's passing that, you know, um, it's, it's natural to want to grieve, you know, but it's kind of a selfish emotion because the one who passed isn't grieving that they're in a better place. But uh, I made it clear right from the start that, you know, and I really wanted this to be a celebration of his life, not a, not a grievous occasion. So, um, um, we really do appreciate everybody making it today. Um, for those of you that have been my support through uh, all these last few weeks, I really want to thank you. It seems like a, a blur. My dad's passing was so sudden that I'm sure that um, I, along with most of us, have uh, we're kind of still in shock. You know, uh, my dad did not let on to anybody how, how sick he was. You know, and and, uh, and actually, you know, for those that didn't know, he had. Uh, liver cancer, but I think he had had that under control, you know, but with all the other medication and whatnot, when I finally got the death certificate, they said he passed from a heart attack, so and it was, it was quick, he didn't, he didn't suffer, so, but, uh, but how do you prepare for something like that, you know, especially when you're a lifelong friend, and uh, man, my dad was just somebody that he just, you heard his voice on the radio, but but when he got a chance to get to know Johnny Shannon, man, he just he just had so much character and charisma, and uh, he just cared for you. You know, he was just a good friend. And uh, so, uh, you know, and in the nature of the media and things, how they work out, I mean, it wasn't just a couple hours after finding out, and my phone just started getting flooded with people coming out of the woodworks. It was just amazing. I mean, I was just bombarded with just a host of just people just calling to offer their support. And um, and I really do appreciate just all the sentiments, the warm sentiments. And uh, here's one thing, you know, and I really, you know, if you hadn't gotten a chance to meet my dad, you know, and I brought some pictures. I spent the first week or so just going through boxes and boxes and boxes of old cassette tapes and pictures and photographs. And it's like I just got to relive the whole thing all over again. And uh, so my, the best thing that I can do to preserve my dad's memory is just to continue the friendships that my dad has had. So I just want to let y'all know, I just want to keep in touch with you guys. So, you know, um, we'll not be 
these strangers. And uh, at this point in time, uh, I'd like to introduce my pastor, Pastor Gilbert. You want to come on up here, sir? I'm going to be reading in the Word of God in Proverbs 17, 6. It says, The children's children are the crown of all men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, Jerry, Jerry King. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Oh, gee, I, was, I can't help but think of going back in time with all the times that I spent with Johnny, particularly on the phone, but uh, not as much around him as, as I'd love to be. But I go back with John Shannon, back to January 1965 at Elkins Institute of Radio in Dallas. He was my roommate. <laughs> And we roomed together in a lady's house. Her name was Miss Dodger. We talked about her so much. And we got the opportunity to uh, hang out, study all the stuff we had. You know, Elkins was a memory thing. He had to memorize everything. Because everybody had to have a first class FCC license to work in any directional radio station. That's why we were there in the first place. So had to get that license, had to get back. I know Johnny had uh, done some little radio work in high school and things like that, but it come time to really get in the, uh, the radio business in a 100% manner. We had to go to Elkins. That, that was the school that actually taught you uh, all the things about learning, uh, about engineering, which we never used. <laughs> we just had to have it. You know, we got to have this license. But after reading John uh, at Miss Dodger's house, never will forget it. We would, uh, he, he did the night course, I did the day course, but in the afternoons we all would get together and go over our notes and, and all that stuff. We'd meet at a, uh, we went over to a little place called the Kettle, the Kettle Cafe, coffee shop, whatever it was. And we'd drink a lot of coffee and study all these little notes and things. But one afternoon in Miss Dodger's house, she had, she had a beautiful piano. And John sat down on it. You play the piano, John? No, a little bit. Said, uh, can you play Last Date? <laughs> My gosh, he broke into Last Date just like Floyd Kramer. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're a musician. You're not going to be this jockey. you be a musician. In which he did maintain doing some of his, uh, some of his music stuff down through the years when he came to... Uh, Kono, it worked in Kono, he came to uh, the Armadillo. Uh, and while he was at the Armadillo, uh, uh, David Allen and uh, Roller Ruiz, they'd get together in the studio. Matter of fact, John sent me about four or five, emailed me some four or five cuts of some of the things they did uh, in the studio. We always made contact with one another. That was the first time, really the only time we got to work around Johnny or with Johnny at a radio station. The rest of the time, we made our, maintained our friendship uh, by phone more than anything. And uh, when Stacy passed away, we would sit on the phone for hours, hour and a half, just reliving. You know, there's nothing like loneliness when you lose a, a spouse. And I had the time, of course, Johnny had a lot of time. And then when my wife passed away last year, April of uh, 2014, Again, that close relationship with Johnny, being on the phone, talking about everything in the world, from radio to Miss Dodger's house, <laughs> to, to uh, everything that we all had in common. Our lives ran uh, parallel quite a bit. And I will miss him. I will certainly miss the phone calls. And the, uh, thank God Elizabeth Ruiz had the, I mean, uh, Liz uh, Patronella had the, the get together over at Chester's Hamburgers a week and two days before he passed away, not knowing how really sick that, uh, that John was. Matter of fact, that was our thing. This thing is over 
squat and grab a cigarette out in the parking lot. <laughs> But that was John. Loved him very much, and I will deeply miss him very much. Years. 
Um, well, let's see. When she uh, would go out of town on business, uh, she's a lawyer and she'd go out of town on business, Johnny would come over and be my house guest. And uh, usually he'd get off the air at midnight, so we'd crank the barbecue up about 12, 31 o'clock. <laughs> we would barbecue till four o'clock in the morning, and we would be given it this, we would not know what was going on, but I put it on the plate anyway, so <laughs> we ate. Uh, <laughs> we never had a crossword between each other. We always had fun. You know, it was always a good time. Every time you call him, he would always be happy to talk to you and, and, and say, well, thank you for calling and this, that, and other, and we'll get together again. And Johnny loved nicknames, and I'd always call him Wheel. Hey, Wheel, how you doing? He uh, was a wheel on the radio stage. He just loved that big wheel name. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he had another name that uh, he would call, and it was kind of a contraction of Brother and Jethro Bodine, I don't know, it came out Brodine. <laughs> hey Brodine, how you doing? So if you ever heard him on the phone talking to that, that, that was me. <laughs> so we talked on the phone weekly and, uh, or more. And when Johnny married Stacy, he settled down kind of like I did. I don't know marriage does that to you. But uh, he, would, uh, he would talk to me now and then we're always going to have that Christmas scotch, or that birthday scooch, as he'd call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd call just, just to see what was going on, and he'd hang up and say, we're going to have that scotch. I'd say, okay, well, let's do it. You know, Johnny, when you drink a scotch with him, he'd always take a shot and imitate Jack Nicholson. <laughs> you remember Easy Rider when Jack Nicholson took that sip of booze and went, Nick, 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 Nick. You remember that? If you're old enough people, okay, well, that was Johnny when he would take that first sip. <laughs> but we, uh, we didn't have that drink. Uh, maybe today we might. And I got to tell Johnny, you're half at the bottom. Oh. Here's you, brother. Oh. <laughs> Nick, 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 Nick. Nick. <laughs> God bless you, Johnny. Take care, my friend. I love you. Thank you all. things kind of settled down a little bit, you know, it was, it was kind of like, man, you know, what do I do now? You know, I'm like, uh, it's, it's, things weren't fitting right, you know, I'm here at my dad's house and I just didn't know whether to stay or go or do this or do that. And I walk into a room and I just stand there for a minute and just look around and I ah, try to push the emotions away and I find another box of tapes and I'd start going through them pictures. My dad, you know, he just saved everything. He saved every bill for the last 15 years. I'm not lying. Steps. And I'm, I'm just like, man, what is the motivation here? You know, there's got to be some kind of psychological situation there. But, you know, I think my dad, he just, you know, it really was a way to just hold on to time, I think. You know, it was a way to hold on to time. And so he had boxes of almost every year. And I could just go through and just pick a box, 2005, 2009, 1997. You know, if I want to see what it was like back in the 
uh, KJ97 days, I got a box for that. <laughs> you know, I, got, I still have this cowboy hat. My dad was never a cowboy. If you knew my dad, he was not a cowboy. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I still have the, the cowboy hat there in the closet. And uh, you know what? Man, I said, I, I had to do it. But I, I went and put the, his boots on. <clears throat> and my dad was a size 13. <laughs> and, uh, and it just occurred to me right then and there that, you know what? I will never be able to fill my dad's shoes. You know, I don't think I would ever even try. Uh, I know I, I've had my, my mishaps in life, and I tell you what, I'm just grateful that my dad got a chance to see me on the other side of things. And it was really just the last couple of years that me and my dad, I, I would always go to my dad and say, Dad, you know what? You know, really, we don't have that much time on this planet here. You know, we really got to take advantage of it, you know? And so just this last couple of years, we've, we've had a chance to, to get a lot closer and uh, I don't know if y'all noticed, but out on the table out there was a menu for the Cracker Barrel. That's, that's where we would always go, you know. And my dad, man, he was just about as old-fashioned as he got, you know. I mean, he liked his roast beef from, from Cracker Barrel. He just, well, you know. And, you know, and I'm just, you know, I mean, I just, man, you know, it's like Steve said, you know, there's certain things about my dad that just stick in your mind, you know, and, 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 uh, and uh, we're definitely going to miss him, so. Since uh, since Jim Carter he uh, he didn't make it, I guess we'll uh, we'll bring Pastor back up. I'm going to be reading from the Word of God in Psalms 90 verse 12, and uh, he was saying something very interesting. You know, and that's what the Scripture talks about that. Uh, God numbers our days, or our days are numbered, and uh, relationships are very, very important, very important, and uh, that's something that we need to look for, because we're not going to be here forever, and uh, understanding that very, very important, you know, that one person we haven't talked to in a while, that one person we haven't called in a while, and sometimes we have to get over our, our issues, our issues, put our issues aside, and and uh, we got one shot of life and one shot of life. Psalms 90 verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Amen. I'm going to ask of Blake, Lindsay. I'm sorry. Situated, uh, I thought about this the other day. It was about 1988, and I had just went back from uh, Austin, and Christmas kind of caught up with us at, at the last minute. And, uh, and it was just me and my dad living over there on the northeast side of San Antonio, and, uh, and uh, we realized we did not have a Christmas tree. So my dad made me climb up the tree in front of the house with a hacksaw <laughs> and cut the top of the tree off, and it was bare on one side, and so we leaned that side up against the corner, you know, and that was our Christmas tree. I don't even think we had any ornaments on it, you know. And, uh, and every year, it's like, you know what, we never seem like, we, you know, I mean, disc jockeys don't make a whole lot of money, you know. I don't know at the time I was going to school and whatnot, but, so we'd always kind of just get each other like a pair of socks. And one year he gave me like a, a key warmer, you know, or, you know, that you put in your keys. When people in Texas don't even know what that is. Up north, you know, it's a thing that you put it in the, in the, the locks would get frozen up and you had to stick something in there to, to thaw it out so you could even unlock the car door, you know? And I'm like, it, yeah, it took me a minute to figure out what it was too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I know my dad, man, that was him at the last minute. He would go to the dollar store, you know, and he would just grab a couple of things, you know, and, and so it actually uh, it became our tradition, you know what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, I, uh, as I was going through things there, I noticed this uh, this little box, this the speaker box that I got from Radio Shack, you know, and it was it was nothing fancy, nothing Bluetooth or anything like that, but you know. 
sometimes you wonder, you know, if your parents really thinking about you, you know, or, you know, that life goes on and stuff. <coughs> You know, he had that thing. This thing must have been a couple of years old. I would have. And uh, thank you for being I ran across it. It was still sitting there in his bedroom underneath the TV. And uh, I just couldn't get myself to open it up or anything. I said, Man, you know, but that was just kind of proof in the pudding. That, uh, you know, I was an only child. So, uh, you know. Now that my dad's passed, you know, uh, and, and you know who you are, you know, uh, we're going to keep in touch. And it's going to be regular. Now, hopefully, how are we doing on that audio and, and everything? It's coming. Is it coming? Okay. I can only come up with so much over here. <laughs> Actually, I could probably talk forever, but uh, you know what? And I tell you, listen, this is Jerry, Jerry King, man. The other day, I got a chance to go to visit with him and his son. And man, you know, and we got a chance to just to catch up on memories. And, you know, and um, it, it, it's really ironic how things just kind of come together. And I know my dad, I don't think he really knew the sensitivity of the time. But how things have just worked together, you know, like 10 years ago, he got inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Just a couple of months ago, he was inducted into the San Antonio Radio Hall of Fame. And, and somehow, something had led him to, to, to create a bio. You I know? asked him for it. <laughs> oh, okay, well, then there, you, there you go. Thank you, Liz. Well, you know what? That was good timing. Because nobody would have known that, that we'd be sitting here today. But my dad, it just seemed like he had just left me everything I needed. So, um, so I just, you know, I hope y'all appreciate the, the memories that I brought up here. You know, um, things that I grew up looking at and, and just, just amazed. You know, my dad had always been my hero growing up. Anytime anybody with the subject of what your parents do for a living, all I had to do was turn the radio on and say, that's my dad right there. So, uh, we ready? No. Okay. Hi, my name is Blake Lindsay. I want to thank you for being here to celebrate the life of my close friend, Johnny Shannon. Johnny was a doer and a giver and a great example. He loved bringing people together as friends. He also took a lot of pleasure in helping others to find and secure employment when he could. Johnny and I were buddies but felt like brothers for 30 years. His zeal for radio and life itself were commonalities that made us close. We celebrated each other's victories, and we were also there to comfort each other during life's occasional sad times. Johnny enjoyed being inducted into the Texas Radio Hall of Fame four years ago and the San Antonio Radio Hall of Fame on August 22nd this year. I'm grateful he was here to celebrate those earned successes. Johnny never allowed my sight impairment to detour our countless fun visits over the years. When I moved to Dallas 24 years, ago, we knew we would remain good friends and visit frequently, and we certainly did. I love Johnny Shannon, and I'm grateful to our good God we got to meet and befriend each other. We never know what our life as we know it, to our life after life will begin. I encourage all of you to be close to our Lord Jesus Christ, and to accept Him as your Lord and Savior if you haven't made that decision yet. There are plenty of rewards right here on earth for your pronouncement, but the greatest incentive to remain excited for is our eternal life in love and celebration, when we receive our greatest promotion ever. If you are a believer, I look forward to our forever celebration together. Let Johnny's life celebration continue in our hearts and minds. Amen. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Ruiz, and I worked with Johnny in the mornings, and um, I thought I was going to be okay today until so I saw everybody here. I, you know, Johnny would just be so happy to see everybody here, and we even have people from the fire department, people from the police department, people from all walks of life here, and of course, his radio buddies and the KTSA family, because that's what we are. There's family, John, God bless you, condolences to you. There's the family, then there's the KTSA family, and then there's the extended radio family. So I really, really appreciate you being here today.
the Lord is my strength and song. I saw you post that on your Facebook. Psalm 118, 14. And I do have a song. Um, I was asked, they said there was, there would be no music, so I'll go in and sing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Um, Johnny confided in me one time. He talked about his granddaughter. Felt like he was getting old. He confided in me one time. He, I don't know how it came up, but he said, Liz, I'm older than you think. <laughs> he said, it's not something I broadcast, but I have a great granddaughter. And I try not to go, oh. I just said, Johnny, that's great. He said, yeah, I don't tell everybody about it, but I'm proud to be a great grandpa. I said, okay, it's our secret. You're old, so am I. That's probably why I was asked to give a eulogy today, because I'm the oldest one here. But what a career he had. What a star, a shining star, spinning the records. And, and yes, you didn't know that you were going to get a, hin a history lesson here, but gentleman Jim Carter called him the Surgeon General in the production room. The Surgeon General, because back then, boys and girls, another history lesson. That is a real to real. <laughs> and back then, we didn't have edit buttons. We had grease pencils, we had razors. And that's how we did our editing, and Johnny would want to get every last breath out of there, and so <laughs> there came the razor. And if we chopped off too much, we couldn't press the undo button on the computer. <laughs> that was it. That was it, folks. And he was the best. And I do believe if gentleman Jim Carter had been here, he would have said the same thing. Yes, and he was a perfectionist who came to his production, and it made me crazy because he edited, he helped produce the news block, and I would say, Johnny, I need this voice, sir. I need it for my next newscast, five minutes. So I'd be there writing another story, getting ready for the news block, and I'd hear him. <laughs> oh, everybody, the whole building could hear Johnny, hearing his voice at least three times, and I'm thinking, okay, it's coming, it's coming. I need the story for my next newscast. But it wasn't there, because he was still editing. <laughs> he was the perfectionist, and he was cutting out every breath. If there was something he didn't like the way he had emphasized a certain word, he would go back and do it again. <laughs> now, I appreciate that. I wish, I wish I could have told him I really appreciate him striving 
for perfection. I can understand. And sometimes it just wasn't time to do it when I was saying, is the story ready? <laughs> but if I could, I would say thank you because I, I knew that when Johnny submitted something, it was going to be there. <laughs> he never said, okay, it's in there. And without it being there, fully produced, and ready to go on the air. I had that confidence. I didn't have to play Johnny's voicer or play Johnny's package to know it was going to be there. I could go on the air, play it knowing it was there, and knowing that you could never hear him breathe. Johnny could never hear him breathe. the radio industry has changed. From the time we had personalities, big personalities like Johnny, solid gold, Shannon, right? And then a lot of things were computerized. There was syndication. And Johnny, wow, I mean, he was flexible throughout his career because he went from Conroe, Texas, and then he got to work in New York and then came back to Houston and Austin and then back to San Antonio and he worked in country radio and then he worked for Magic. So throughout his entire career, he was flexible. He changed with the times. And then he was doing production at uh, KTSA and for our sister stations and we were looking for a traffic reporter. And so I said, there's this great voice and I told our news director at the time, I said, why don't we just use Johnny? I mean, he's, he's lived in San Antonio for so many years, he knows the streets, you know, and we can always teach him to do traffic. And um, but what a great voice. And he could still do production. So that's how he came into the news department, doing traffic. And then uh, from there, that job went away. And then there was a news reporter job opening, and there he went. Talk about being out of your comfort zone. Uh, there he was covering stories for us. And um, I know he would come back and he would say, you know who was there? Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. I thought, yeah, yeah, but the story, Johnny. <laughs> you know who was there? I saw the mayor. The story, Johnny. <laughs> But he did, he did enjoy that, but it was tough. And uh, his job was to come in at 4.15 in the morning. And we could count on Johnny. I mean, like clockwork. We knew he was going to be there. He was dependable. Uh, talk about perseverance. Talk about dedication. He was there. And when he wasn't there on time, we knew something was wrong. And uh, there was one time he, but he never talked about his illnesses. I mean, we knew. Sometimes he had lengthy illnesses and he had to be out for a long time. We knew that. But it's not something he talked about. He didn't come in and talk about his aches and pains. He would come in and say, Liz? <laughs> and Carol reminded me of that. Carol, because she said, he would call me and say, Carol? Didn't he always start with that? He was telling But um, there was one morning he called and said, Liz? I'm running a little late. And I didn't ask, I said, just get here when you can. I knew if he was running late, there was a good reason for it. When he got there, when we had a chance to talk, he told me, I couldn't put my shoes on because my left foot was so slow, so swollen. And I said, Johnny, go home. You don't need to be here, go home. And he said, well, you know, by that time, 4.30 in the morning, and he said, I can't see a doctor anyway. He said, I, I managed to get some sneakers on, I'm fine. And I'll see the doctor later today. But that's how dedicated he was. And so, and I do remember Karen Klaus, who did the morning news block before I did, and she was saying, he came in one time and coughed, and we said, she said, I told him to go home, but it was so hard to get him to go home. 
you know, when he was ill, and if he could, he could, he would just hang in there. And that's what he did towards the end. I mean, there were times he came in using his cane, and um, he went out and bought some nice looking house shoes. And that's why when you all might have seen him out in public wearing his house shoes, it's because his ankles or his feet would swell so much. That's all he could wear. But he kept coming to work. He kept coming to work, something we can all appreciate. And I hope that young people here today will take that and note how important that is. And you have a job. And even though there were times where he could have gone home or we told him to go home, he wouldn't. So Johnny, we appreciate your dedication to you. He was a very private person. He was quiet, he was not loud, he was not braggadocious. He was in the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. And then most recently, I was so blessed to be there when he was inducted into the San Antonio Radio Hall of Fame. And Brent, thanks for posting that picture of us there at the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. It was very nice being with him there and his wife, Stacy, and she passed on. And I know he was hurting. And Jerry, cousin Jerry. Jerry's not just my cousin, he's everybody's cousin. Cousin Jerry. Thanks for being there. Thanks for being there for Johnny, for that. He reinvented himself. He did what it took to continue doing what he loved best, and that was radio, and how blessed he was, and how blessed I am too, and how blessed many of us here are that we work for a place that allowed him to continue doing what he did best, a place that allowed him to reinvent himself, a place that allowed him to try to learn new things so that he could continue doing what he loved best till the very end, and that is radio. I will remember him as a gentleman. He never said anything untoward in my presence. He was stubborn. <laughs> no, I know many of you are shocked. <laughs> Johnny, was that you? <laughs> But he never said anything untoward in my presence. He was a gentleman, a gentle man. And I love him, I will remember him. And Bill O'Neill, our news director, thank you so much for your patience. It's hard for me to work at a station when there aren't any others around. And I still have a cell phone number. I was on the bulletin board, and you haven't taken it down. And I still have this email for those times that I could just glance up there and call him. And I had to call him on his old antiquated phone, because he said he did not like for me to call him on the smartphone at the station. <laughs> I would like to ask now if we could all stand reach across the aisle, on hands, and say the Lord's Prayer. It's Key 103 giving away a bunch of cars and giving you a chance to call up and guess a little bit later on. Don't run off. We'll be taking your calls not long from now right here at Key 103. Here's the question. Are you going to take a video of me taking a video of us? Here's the picture of the... Picture. So here's the question I have for you. And we want... <laughs> we need a picture of you. 
Because Daryl and I were just talking about how wonderful you are in the air. Roger Allen always says, you got to listen to Johnny Shannon. Does he really? You have to listen to how tight his board is. Where did you get your technique? <laughs> Probably... Wow. And my first radio got job in Conroe, Texas. Yeah. Johnny Shannon had his first hands-on experience in radio broadcasting working at KTRM in Beaumont while he was in junior high school. It was 1958, and his parents had made a special arrangement with a station manager to let Johnny spend his Saturdays at the station where he could practice reading and recording news and commercial copy in the recording studio. Johnny also spent time in the control room with local jock J.P. Richardson otherwise known as the Big Bopper. When he was a senior in high school, Johnny got his first real radio job on the air after school at KMCO in Conroe. After graduation, he attended the Elkins Institute of Broadcasting in Dallas, where he earned his first class FCC license. In the summer of 1965, Johnny landed a weekend air shift at Kilton, Houston. But a year later, military obligations brought him to San Antonio for the first time. While in training at Fort Sam Houston, Johnny was hired as a weekend jock at KTSA. He moved around the state a bit after that, but returned to KTSA full-time in 1968. He did a brief stint at Kono, then moved away again for a few years. In 1973, Johnny returned to Kono as afternoon jock and image voice. He would then work as program director of Kitty and Keys, moved to Kerrville briefly, then returned to KTSA in 1979 for a midday air shift. Next, Johnny worked in Austin radio for five years, but who can ever get San Antonio out of their mind? So back he came to work first at KSMG, then KDIL and KJ97. Then Johnny finally hung up his traveling headphones and returned for the fourth time to KTSA. Uh, thank you, Liz, and uh, thank all of you for being here. And <clears throat> special thanks to uh, those who uh, decided that I would be inducted here. I appreciate that very much. So many people to thank in so many ways. You've heard so many times that San Antonio is considered a very unique city. Well, we can say the same thing about the group of broadcasters in San Antonio. You just don't find this kind of friendship and camaraderie that uh, we all seem to have. And you'll also notice that every time there's an event like this, if it's a luncheon or an induction, we all walk away having made new friends because we run into our friends and we meet their friends and so it's all good so once again thank you very much well, you're tight now you don't let the automation take over you have your own style what is what do you call your style oh. I've never uh, tried to define it other than just, first of all, do what they expect you to do. Yeah. And then uh, add uh, some of your own creative ideas and techniques and uh, try to make it exciting. Four o'clock on a Kona 101 Viva Fiesta Winners Weekend. Stand by to win and celebrate with three dog knives. 326, Johnny Shannon here at KTSA, and we always want to know about it. If you wear your gold and silver button to work, our button spotter would like to go to work on you. Austin's Key 103 giving away a bunch of cars and giving you a chance to call up and guess a little bit later on. Don't run off. We'll be taking your calls not long from now right here at Key 103. <laughs> Well, this is it for Houston weather. Warm through Tuesday. Scattered sunshine tomorrow afternoon. Showers on Tuesday. Overnight low 65. High tomorrow going to be 84. Now it is 78 at the airport. 77 at Kilt. Hello, this is KO. Who is this? Mrs. Shannon? Yeah? Hey, wait a minute. I recognize your voice now. Wait a minute. Say something I would recognize. I think I recognize you here. Well, uh... You certainly are a freaky person, Shannon. Now say hello, freak, you're on the radio. Hello, freak, you're on the radio. That's who it is. This is old gentleman Jim Carter, isn't it? That's who it is. Hello, K-O-N-O. Hello, Shannon. Bobby Dark. Bobby Dark? Yes, well, I'm Bobby. Birthday, man. Thank you. K-O-N-O -O News. And I'm Shannon with more K-O-N-O -O Rock. Hot Country, KJ97, giving away the best George Strait Music Festival tickets. Your chance to win is coming up this afternoon a little after 5 o'clock. 
Good times and great oldies at Magic 105 FM. This is Johnny Shannon wishing you good luck. Keep listening for the sound of that longhorn steer to qualify and win just like magic. me on the phone. He wasn't going to get all choked up when he came up here. And I said, man, Steve, don't, don't worry about it. You know, and, and uh, man, it was all I could do here just to keep my composure here, you know. And, uh, we're going to miss it. Amen. Thanks, John. 